Hi everybody, Peter here, Thailand Band. Time for another story. So when I started my YouTube channel some time ago, I did put out the question and I asked for some feedback. I wanted to find out what kind of videos you wanted to see, i.e. travel style videos where I check into budget hotels, find great places to eat, that sort of thing. Um, and I did ask whether you'd want to see more on the entertainment venues, places like Nana Plaza or uh, Soy Cowboy Walking Street in Pattaya, just basically to get an idea what you guys um, were interested in, in in seeing me make videos about, because obviously there are thousands of videos about Thailand on YouTube already. Now, something that I've had, feed, good feedback that I've had is the stories that I tell with regards to relationships between um, Thai bar girls especially and foreigners or Thai girls that foreigners have met um, when visiting Thailand, relationships that have gone sour, that sort of thing. And as I say, the feedback that I've received is quite positive wherein you, you actually do like to hear these stories. So I thought I'd give you another one today. Now, I just want to let you know these stories are first-hand information. Obviously, I've been going to Thailand for nearly 30 years. I lived there for several years continually and I'll be going back out there in a month or so. So as I say, all these videos are first-hand information. It's not things I've heard from other people. Um, I can guarantee that it's all um, genuine uh, and true. Now, the next video I'm going to make today is on the same uh, par as the ones that I've done before. I'm basically going to tell you about uh, an English man who visited Pattaya quite frequently. He developed a relationship with a girl and I don't want to ruin the end for you right now because it is a good story um, but it's got an interesting twist to the end so I'll jump straight in and for this video we're going to call the couple Pla and Thomas we never use real names for obvious reasons um, but the lady will call Pla and the guy will call Thomas so to set the scene basically what I need to do is I need to fill you in on the background to Thomas and how he um, arrived in Thailand, how he ended up having several trips to Thailand. Now Thomas, um, the first time he, he actually landed in Thailand, he was about 60 years of age, 59, 60, something like that, um, and he did become a regular visitor. Now, background on Thomas, he was a full-time taxi driver in a small market town in the UK. He made good money, the hours were flexible, he worked for a big company, but he was self-employed. And the beauty of being self-employed with a taxi company, you can come and go when you want to. If you don't want to work for a month, you just tell them you're not coming in and they'll accept it. Because with taxi companies in the UK, one of the things that are very difficult for them is finding drivers. They have to be licensed to the hilt and it's very difficult for them to keep drivers. So if they have a good driver who's regular, as long as he lets them know, then it's a real flexible job. And the money's pretty good as well. I mean, it's one of those jobs you can't, uh, it's not nine to five, but if you put the hours in, you can earn the equivalent to 100,000 baht a month, which is pretty good money. Um, now, Thomas, um, he was married. He had two children. Um, he, he was very lucky because he had a council house. To anybody who's not English, a council house is um, it's a government house. It's, it was a three-bedroom house with a front and back garden. Very comfortable, very well built in the 30s or 40s. Um, but in the UK, if you have a council house, it's minimal rent to the council, the government, and uh, they're pretty good houses. Now, when we had our first um, female Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, she brought out a law or a rule. She did what they call buy to, uh, your right to buy, basically. And she sold off a lot of the government housing, which is a bolder contention these days because we don't have enough government housing now. But in those days... Um, if you lived in a council house, a government house, she allowed you to buy your own house from the government and it was cheap. And I think Thomas actually took advantage of this and I think he paid something ridiculous. Um, I think it was £8,000 he paid for the house in 81 or 82. I knew Thomas very well in, in Pattaya. I'd, I'd had chat, uh, lots of chats with him and um, we discussed this. So I'm, I'm just going on memory from what Thomas told me. So he paid about £8,000 for his house. Um, three bedroom house, as I say. Now... If you can equate the value of that house to modern day values, we're talking 30 years later, just over 30 years, um, those houses today will sell anywhere in the neighborhood of 120 to 150,000 pounds. Now that's a nice neighborhood to be in. Now, bearing in mind that Thomas paid 8,000 for it, he paid it off pretty quickly. He had a little bit of savings from his taxi job and uh, he owned that house outright. 
Now, at this time, Thomas was married. As I say, he had two teenage children. Um, now, unfortunately, Thomas's wife was one of those English women who she wanted her cake and she, she wanted to keep her cake and she wanted to eat it at the same time. And what I mean by that is she didn't like Thomas being out all hours of the day and night. Um, she was always moaning. She was always bitching about it, that he was never home. Um, but on the other hand, she wanted money in her purse. She wanted lots of money. She had things to buy for the kids, things to buy for the house and things to buy for herself. So, you know, she was always on Thomas's back for extra housekeeping money. Now, the thing with taxi, and if you're driving a taxi, it's one of those kind of jobs where it's not nine to five. You're going to work when everybody else is um, taking their leisure time. So you're going to be working on a Saturday night all night. You're going to be working evenings. You're going to be working Saturday afternoons, picking shoppers up and uh, Sunday as well you'll take your time off when everybody else is at work it's just that kind of job it's um, you know any job it's like the hotel industry that's kind of similar hours now Thomas was very hard working he wasn't a lazy man he cared for his family but he put in a lot of hours he was doing anywhere between 60 and 80 hours a, a, a week depending on the time of year obviously if it was Christmas and he needed more money it would be 80 hours if it was in the summer and he was taking it easy it's nice weather he liked to go fishing um, from time to time then he might do 50 60 hours um, but as I say his wife was always on his back she wanted um, she wanted him around but she also wanted money now you can't have both either he goes out and works and he get brings home money or he stays home and they don't have money um, so to get to the point to cut uh, the story to cut, cut a long story short she basically ended up she met another man uh, Thomas's wife and she moved in with this man and Thomas was left um, with the children um, his house was paid for obviously now Eventually, Thomas's children moved. Uh, they grew up and they moved out. They they did their own thing. Um, I think the boy went to university, and his daughter um, met a guy, moved in with him, um, which basically meant Thomas was a free agent. So he's living in this three-bedroom house. It's totally paid for, other than his um, his his taxes that you have to pay in the UK, uh, water bill, electric, that sort of thing. Um, he he had quite a lot of um, income now. Obviously, living on your own, he's, he didn't want to stay home and uh, watch TV. And because of his age, there's not a lot to do in the UK. It's not like you can go out nightclubbing or partying. He, the guy's nearly 60. Um, so what does he do? Especially in the winter, he worked. Um, now, because he's working long hours just to so he didn't have to stay at home, he did manage to uh, accumulate quite a bit of money. Um, but he was starting to get lonely and he wanted to meet somebody. He'd been to um, some of these singles clubs in the UK uh, I've never been to one, but from what I gather from other people speaking to them, the women, the women at these singles clubs, divorce clubs, uh, they're there to um, meet other divorcees, uh, men and women, you know. But from what the stories I've been told, they've just all got a chip on their shoulder. They all hate men. They've all been um, hard done by, and they're 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 by all accounts, from what I hear, they're they're pretty much all bitter, bitter women. Um, Thomas wasn't interested in this, you know, he, he wasn't just after a, a leg over, as it were. He, he was looking for a relationship or, and maybe just some fun. But the women at these clubs were, um, <laughs> they weren't for him, basically. Um, so Thomas, in his free time, he did surf the Internet. He put thing, things into, he typed phrases into Google, like where are the best places in the world to meet women? Uh, you know, uh, somebody who's 60, the best way to meet a woman them sort of phrases and as always Thailand comes to the top of the list when women are involved um, decided to take a holiday Thomas decided to book a holiday he was quite a frugal man and basically he um, he traveled via Dubai so instead of having a direct flight which would normally cost about 500 pounds or 400 pound back then um, he stopped off for a few hours in Dubai and it was about he saved himself about 100 pounds um, went out on a simple holiday I think he went for three weeks the first time um, touched down in Bangkok did the normal um, soy cowboy Nana Plaza but as he was there for three weeks he'd, he'd done his research before he came out and he decided to uh, head down to Pattaya because he'd, he'd read what fun it is down there and uh, you know age doesn't really matter um, if you've been to Pattaya you know what I mean or if you live in Pattaya um, so anyway Thomas headed down this is his first trip to Thailand he's headed down to Pattaya can't believe it he gets down there and he's like a kid in a candy shop girls everywhere I think last count there was something like 25,000 working girls in Pattaya um, 
he's never seen anything like this in his life. Now, obviously, he's not poor. He's got a few um, quid, a few pounds in his pocket, so he's not really too stingy. He can afford to buy drinks. He can afford to go out. He doesn't stay in a, a large hotel. He books into, um, I think he actually stayed in a room above a go-go -go bar, actually, um, four or 500 baht a night. Um, but anyway, uh, Thomas is in Bang in um, Patira's first uh, few nights there. It's his first trip. And uh, he's having a whale of a time. He goes down to Walking Street. It's, um, you know, he gets scammed a couple of times with drinks and um, girls. It's his first trip. It's to be expected. He makes a few mistakes. Nothing serious. He doesn't get in trouble with the police or he doesn't get robbed. But, you know, he makes a few small mistakes and um, he ends up paying for it. But he, he's a quick learner, Thomas, and uh, once bitten, twice shy. Um, but he's decided, Thomas has decided that he loves Pat here. It's a great place to be. He's 60 years of age. Um, he could be any age. In, in the UK, he's, he's basically got no life. He works and watches the TV. Here he's a handsome man. He walks down the street. Everybody wants to know him. So he loves it. Why wouldn't you love it? Especially if you'd never been there before. So Thomas takes advantage of the situation in Pat here. He's bar finding girls from all over the place. Um, you know, and, he, and he's thoroughly enjoying himself. Now, eventually the day comes, he does have to head back up to Bangkok for a night before he takes his flight back to the UK. Um, comes back to the UK, works throughout the winter, and he can't stop thinking about Pat here. He's had a thoroughly good time. And as I say, he's not particularly poor. He drives his taxi, he's got flexible hours. He's earning the equivalent of 100,000 baht a month. Um, when he's not in Thailand, he's saving the majority of that because he's got no mortgage. He owns his house outright, so he, you know, he's not um, he's 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 not rich by a long shot, but he, he's doing okay financially. Now, Thomas decides he's going to be a regular. He's going to book out. To, he's going to book a flight back to. Uh, I think it was February. He went back on his second trip. Um, he's decided he's going to be a regular. He loves it. It's his sort of town. Um, he doesn't know anywhere else in the world he could have so much fun. So he books it. He goes back to Patio a second time. He does exactly what he did the first time. He he goes out and parties. Uh, he stays in a smaller style hotel, save money. He's quite frugal, as I say. And um, he's bar finding here, there and everywhere. He's anywhere between Soy 6 and Walking Street. He's out every night. He's taking the rocket fuel. Um, that, let's keep it clean for YouTube. But the tablets that help... Uh, guys who are a bit older if that makes sense if you can read between the lines so he's taking his rocket fuel he's out every night and he's having a thoroughly good good time so basically without boring i don't want to bore you with a story he does this half a dozen times before we really get into the story um where he meets pla um but i'm just basically setting the scene so you know thomas's background what he did for a living his financial situation he'd been out to patia he got stung a few times in the early days he's now a, a regular He's been out there half a dozen times, as I say. And at this point, um, let's call it his seventh time. I can't remember if it's fifth, sixth or seventh time, but he's come out as usual. He's on his seventh time. Now, Thomas at this time, he's no longer a newbie. He'd been learning Thai. He, he wasn't a fluent speaker, not a long, a long way from being a fluent speaker. Um, I wouldn't even say he could speak very, very good. I knew Thomas. I heard him speak in Thai. Um, it wasn't too bad, considering he'd only been out there half a dozen times. He could ask um he could barter on the market he could order most of his food in thai he could tell a taxi to go left right stop um he he could he could he could speak enough thai to get by now when he'd come out on his um the last time i'm talking about now not the last time he came to thailand but the last time in this particular um stretch of the story he'd been out half a dozen so it's either his sixth or seventh time now at this point he was speaking a little bit of thai and he was starting to get bored with the short time experiences. Let's put it that way. Um, and to anybody who hasn't been out there regular, I mean, if you go out there for two weeks, once a year, you're going to look at this video and think, well, you know, the guy needs to mix more water with his drinks. How can you get bored in Patia? But believe me, you, you can. I lived there for a number of years. And um, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, there was a time I didn't go out um, to the bars for about eight months. I just got totally bored with it. Um, you do come back into it. But anyway... Thomas was in this situation. Now, he was going out and doing his thing, but he was putting a lot more thought into it. And he was starting to think more longer term. He was thinking, you know, he liked the lifestyle out there. He was getting a little bit bored with the short term experiences. And he started thinking about maybe um, la laying out some plans for longer periods of time in Thailand, especially Patty. He thought about maybe getting a room. He could certainly afford to um, keep a small room 
um, on the go all the time. I mean, if he was paying four or five thousand baht for a room um, with air conditioning and a, a small uh, bathroom, toilet, shower room on the side, they have these, um, they look like cups. When you go away, you just lock it over the door handle, nobody else can get in. So he could certainly afford to go back to the UK, drive his taxi, make money, and keep his apartment, um, or his, his room, he could keep that full time. And this is a way he was starting to think now. He was, he was, um, he was kind of thinking he wouldn't mind getting into a relationship with a nice Thai girl. He was kind of getting a bit fed up of the um, um, short-term experiences, as I say. Don't want to um, repeat that too many times. But basically, he 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 wanted something a bit more substantial out of Thailand now. Um, and he, when he went out to eat, he was he was putting a lot of thought into this. Um, now he'd actually read on the internet. He, he he went back on Google and he was typing things. How do you meet proper Thai girls? Nice Thai girls? Decent Thai girls? Um, he wanted a girlfriend basically. Now Thomas is quite a wise guy. He wasn't going to um, try and get a permanent girlfriend out of a go-go bar or uh, another uh, beer bar because he wasn't stupid. He he's seen other people's relationships. They've tried to. Um, there's an old saying: you can take the girl out of the bar but you can't take the bar out of the girl and that's absolutely true um, I've never really known a relationship to work out um, f with a, a girl from a bar and um, a guy who's who's tried to develop a relationship it always kind of goes um, wrong I don't want to sound totally negative but that that's my own personal experience I haven't known any of those relationships to actually work um, so with this as I say Thomas he's not a, a stupid man he's decided um, he wants to find himself a girlfriend so Unfortunately, he makes a classic mistake, which a lot of foreigners make when they're in Thailand. They're clever enough to realize if they take a girl from a go-go bar or a beer bar or that kind of establishment, that kind of venue, then, you know, nine, well, I was going to say nine times out of ten, let's say ten times out of ten, it doesn't work. So he made a classic mistake. A lot of foreigners, when they've been there a few times or they go there to live and they've been there three months, they learn a little bit of the language. They make this mistake where they think if they meet a girl outside of those kind of entertainment venues, then 100% every time they're good Thai girls. So Thomas went round a few shops and malls and trying to chat up these girls. And uh, eventually um, he came across one of the older shopping malls in 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 Pattaya. it's down the uh, halfway down the beach road it's called mike's shopping mall it's um it was one of the first it's nothing special now but he was in there and he met a girl turned out later her name was pla and she was um they have these kind of stalls in the middle of the mall it wasn't a glass fronted shop it was just an open stall and stall and she was selling t-shirts it wasn't her stall um but she was on there she was selling these t-shirts and she was a cashier, she was a sales girl, she was everything. Boss would uh, bring her there in the morning and leave her there all day and come and collect the money at night. Um, now she spoke some English, it wasn't bad actually. Thomas um, said hello to her, struck up a conversation and she was very friendly. She spoke to Thomas and a uh, little bit shy. Thomas, he didn't go too far on the first time. He, he left with a smile on his face and um, he went off. Now he went back that evening actually. He was going to go back the following day but um, it, 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 in Thailand, the um, the shops tend to stay open. The the malls and the shops tend to stay open quite late, uh, eight ten o'clock, even midnight. Um, so this is about seven o'clock. He'd seen her in the day, and he decided to um, go back and see her again. His plan was to go back the next day, as to not be too obvious. But he couldn't wait. He liked her, put it that way. Um, he went back about seven o'clock. She was there, and uh, he did ask the question. He said, "What time do you finish tonight?" She said, "I finish at half past seven. My boss will be here. I'll be five minutes from my boss." And he asked us outright, would you like to come out to dinner? And she accepted. Um, now, I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty of it. Uh, we've all taken ladies out for dinner. We know how it works. You don't need to be told from me how it works. But he took her out to dinner on the, on the seafront, a very nice beachfront restaurant, a little bit upmarket for Pla. She probably didn't eat in these kind of places too regular. Um, but Thomas would have done. Anyway, had dinner. It was very successful. I wasn't sat there with him, so I can't tell you the whole conversation. But I did speak to Thomas on several more occasions, and he told me that it, it went very well. Um, now, as I say, I, I'm going to just um, um, say this point again. One of the classic mistakes that foreigners make is if they meet a girl who doesn't work in an entertainment um, venue, they'll automatically think that she's a good girl. She's not a working girl. Um, and this unfortunately isn't always the case. Now, a real decent 
Thai girl from a proper good Thai family and her family are living in the town, she's not going to go out with um, a Western foreigner who's five times her weight. She's not going to go out with a Westerner who's five times, five decades her age. She's not going to be speaking fluent um, English and working in a small stall in a shopping mall. If she speaks fluent English, very good English, she's going to have a very good job with a Thai company. And a Thai girl from a decent family is not going to meet the foreigner. Um, she just wouldn't do it. I mean, even if she had a, a Thai boyfriend, um, normally they go out with their family chaperones. There's always somebody in tow. Um, and 100% uh, a decent Thai girl from a decent Thai family would not sleep with a foreigner or a Thai man unless they were maybe engaged and even then it's not guaranteed for the guy. So basically what I'm trying to say here, I guess, is, you know, I'm not trying to be negative or put Thai women down, but you can't assume that if you meet a Thai girl in a shop or she works in a restaurant or any of those sort of places, you can't assume that she's automatically um, straight as a die because they're not. And what you'll find is a lot of them, they do have regular jobs, but their incomes are very, very low. And you'll find a lot of them will work part time. So they don't actually work in a go go bar, they don't work in a fixed bar, but they might hang around on the beach and they don't mind if they don't get a customer, they'll go and speak to a friend. But if they meet the right man and he's willing to give her a thousand baht, then it's a bonus. And you'll find a lot of them do that. So they'll have a regular job or they'll be at um, college, wherever it is, and they'll they'll do a little bit of this or part time. Um, now, obviously, if they can meet somebody and have a kind of full time relationship, that is uh, it's a bonus. Um, so just set in the background there, so you know um, what that side of things is all about. If you live in Thailand or you're a regular visitor, you'll know what I'm telling you now is is to be true. You might not agree with all of it, but um, this video is just my personal experience um, and my own opinions. They're not. Uh, chiseled in stone you can make your own mind up now Thomas uh, at this point he'd he'd come to uh, Patty for a month on this occasion and he was only he'd only been there about three or four days when he met Pla so he had the whole three weeks to um, spend time with her now um, he really liked Pla a lot I don't know how long it was until he um, uh, trying to keep it polite until he uh, let's just say got very close to her if you know what I mean um, but he had three weeks holiday ahead of him with Pla and um, he didn't want her to work basically he wanted to spend every minute of the day with her take her to the beach uh, take a go-kart and take her wherever hiking in the mountains I don't know um, but Pla agreed not to work but she said she takes care of her family and Thomas told me at the time when we discussed this Thomas told me that he'd agreed to give um, Pla at that time, we're going back a decade or so ago, two decades, he'd agreed to give Pla 15,000 baht a month not to work. Now, as soon as he told me that, my eyes went up in the air. Uh, my eyes were rolling in my head. I didn't want to burst Thomas's bubble. As I say, he was a pretty decent chap. But I did try to kind of tell him and I said, look, Thomas, you know, it doesn't work like that in Thailand. If you meet a nice girl, you don't pay 15,000 baht a month for her to stay with you it just doesn't work like that but you know he was um he'd already been bitten by the love bug and he wasn't going to be told by anybody um so he, he had his three weeks with Pla. he had a good time um and that was it basically he went back to the uk um now we had uh you've got skype obviously you've got whatsapp and line social media apps so these days it's very very easy and it's very cheap to stay in contact from anywhere around the world and that's exactly what thomas and Pla did he was on skype every night um, she um, was in her room, um, she did seem to go back at the same time every night, so um, that's a fairly good sign I suppose. Um, but he Skyped her most nights and he, you know, he was working, saving his money and he was, um, you know, every time he seen her on Skype he, he just wanted to go back and eventually he did. Um, now, from this point on, Thomas went back probably another half a dozen times and during this half a dozen times, he did the same thing. There were no more girly bars. There were no more short time experiences. He got, he went straight down to Patia. Uh, and by the way, Pla wasn't from Patia. She didn't have any family in Patia. She'd gone down there to work. I don't know how she ended up in Mike's shopping mall selling 
t-shirts or shoes or whatever it was um, but just to let you know her family was not living in in Patti. that's quite important part of the story um, so the following six times as I say Thomas um, same sort of thing he'd, he'd, he'd stay one night in Bangkok because it's a 12-hour flight out of London to Bangkok if you go direct longer if you stop off in the Middle East um, and then you've got it's an I, I do it many times I've done it for years it's 18 hours door to door from when I leave my front door to checking into my hotel in Bangkok it's 18 hours very very tiring and the older you get the more tiring it becomes so basically what Thomas would do he'd fly over he'd have a night um, he'd check into a small hotel on Sukhumvit somewhere I think it was a Majestic something like that and um He'd have a night out in Nana Plaza, but basically he, he was looking forward to seeing Pla. He'd um, book a, he'd get in a taxi the next day down to Patia and he'd spend the whole two weeks, three weeks, month, however long he was there with Pla and, and they were basically a couple. Now, obviously after seeing her, probably the equivalent time to sort of five, six months because he'd, he'd been going over six, seven times, spent all his time with Pla. She appeared to be a real nice girl. Um, bearing in mind he hadn't picked her up in a go-go bar or a, a regular bar so he took her on face value that she was a good Thai girl and, and without being negative I'm not saying she was a bad girl I'm just saying she wanted 15,000 baht a month um, to stay with him um, you make your own mind up so eventually um, Thomas gave it some more thought and you know he was thinking about his life he was about 60 61 at this point he had plenty of money he didn't have any financial issues as i said earlier he wasn't rich but he was doing well um he could come and go with his taxi job um but you know he'd been with Pla now sort of five six months he liked her a lot um he didn't necessarily want to bring her back to the uk because as i say thomas was quite a, a clever guy and one thing he did realize um you know to bring a thai girl out of that environment um and bring her back to a small sleepy market town in the UK it wouldn't take long for her to get bored and who knows what's going to happen then so he was quite wise like that and, and quite rightly he decided any long-term relationship with Pla was not going to be in the UK um, maybe a visit or so but he, he wasn't going to try and set up home and be happy families with Pla in the UK he just didn't think it'd work and I tended to agree with him um, so he was thinking more and more, Thomas was thinking more and more, how could he make a, a long-term relationship with Pla? And he was thinking about coming out to Thailand. Now, he was, um, it's pretty, it was pretty easy to get kind of long-term visas back then, retirement visas, work permits. There's all sorts of agents everywhere. It's all about money. If you can pay the fee, you'll get what you want, especially back then. It, wasn't, it was a little bit more lax than it is today. Um, but you could basically stay as long as you wanted, as long as you could fund your, your trips. Now... Thomas had decided he he might want to, um, he didn't have to, because of his job, the great thing about what he was doing up back in the UK, he didn't have to go along and say, I'm giving him a notice, I don't want to work for you anymore. He could say, I'm going away for six months, I'm going away for three months, I'm going away for a year. And as long as he kept his badges up, the taxi company would have him back overnight. He could go back after six months, say, I want to drive, they check his badges, away he goes. So it was great for that. Um, so Thomas is discussing with various schemes they could come up with to let Thomas stay in Thailand long term but obviously although he wasn't a, a poor man he did need to think about bringing in an income um, you know obviously if he was going to go out there and test the waters stay out there and you know if he if it worked out with Pla and he decided to stay out there full time then he, he definitely would need an income um, so, but yeah, he, he decided that he was going to, he'd need some kind of a business. He, he wouldn't be able to work there. Um, he didn't really want to open a little beer bar. He'd seen horror stories of guys that had fallen in love with girls, open beer bars, and within sort of two, three months, all the money had gone. Um, it's not what, I mean, you don't, it's not exactly what Patty needs, is it? Another beer bar. Um, you know, so he, he, he decided that that wasn't what he wanted to do. Um, now, if you're not familiar with Patia, I'll just I'll let you know a little bit of the layout. Patia, um, there's several different areas of interest. Now, the main area is the beach road. It goes from the Dolphin Roundabout on the second road. Uh, all you'll come down all the way along the beach. You'll get to Walking Street. Um, if you're in a Bart bus, it will turn left there, back up to the second street, and you'll do it again. It's it's like a shoebox. Um, that's one area of of um, 
Patia. Then you've got North Patia. So if you went along the second road, you get to the Dolphin Roundabout, go straight over instead of turning left back down to the beach. That would take you up to North Patia, which is quite nice. There's some nice soys down there with some nice apartments. Um, but a lot of foreigners, they don't kind of head over that way. Now, another area where you do get a lot of foreigners there, but not everybody knows uh, about the area, is a place called Jumptian. It's about 10 minutes away in a BART bus. This is a more quieter part of... Um, Patia, but the great thing about it is it's only 10 minutes away from the action so you'll get a lot of el older foreign guys will stay there in plenty of hotels and restaurants they'll stay and jump in and when they want a bit of action they'll jump in the back of a bar bus for 20 bar they can go to walking street and hang out down there and uh, you know fill their boots as it were um, now Pla and uh, Thomas used to hang out and jump in the um, um, I didn't actually know where Pla lived uh, I think she lived um, more central um, Patia, but I, I never did find out where she lives. So Thomas always stayed at a hotel on the beach road. Um, he changed hotels; it wasn't the same hotel. Um, but what he used to do, he he was with Pla near enough full time when he was there. She kind of lived with him in his room, and many times when they weren't doing kind of activities like um, you know go karting something like that, they'd head over to Jumped in and they'd sit in the chairs there. You thirty baht a day, you can sit there all day and dip your feet in the uh, water as it were, it's very pleasant. I've done it myself many, many times. Um, but it was during one of these trips to jump in, um, Thomas used to rent a motorcycle, one of these little Honda Clicks or Vibes, and you know, you could you could, um, you could, could basically uh, ride up and down the, the seafront in jump in, it's a very long beach. And you know, one of these days, uh, Thomas and Pla, they're on the bike, and they were looking for somewhere new to eat, somewhere a little bit, uh, it was lunchtime, they wanted to find some, um, they just wanted to go somewhere different. They jumped on the bike. They headed down the uh, jumped in beach road. About a quarter of the way down there, not too far, there was. Um, they turned off the beach road. They seen a restaurant, and they went to have a meal in this restaurant. Now, opposite this little Thai restaurant, there was a sign in Thai that said for lease. It was a guest house. Um, Pla translated it for Thomas. Um, just to let you know, to, to cut the story short, basically what it was, it was a, a, um, a house with four bedrooms, four double rooms, and there was a shop front downstairs and you could have a bar there, you could have a restaurant there, whatever. Um, now, the um, from what I understand, to get in there, the I don't know if it was key money or the lease or um, I don't think it was, I don't think you were actually purchasing the building, but to get in there, it was something like a couple of million baht, which in them days was about fifty thousand pounds, sixty thousand dollars U.S. dollars. Um, now, Pla kind of um, said to Thomas, you know, it wouldn't it be great if we we had that place? We could have a small restaurant downstairs. We could have a bar in the evening. There's four rooms. We could live in one of the rooms, and we could let the other three rooms out. And Thomas didn't really give it a lot of thought. <clears throat> However. As time went on, uh, Thomas was still thinking about his, um, you know, how he could how he could make money long term, and he and he kind of started thinking about this guest house, and he went back there on his own. He asked around, he spoke to the agent about it. He went inside, he had a look, and he kind of liked the idea about um, taking over this small establishment. As I say, four bedrooms. Him and Pla could live in one. Um, there's a shop front downstairs. They could open a restaurant or a bar for very small money. He could have fitted it out. And he could have even had another business. He could have put a few motorbikes out the front to rent to tourists. Um, so he was coming around to that idea. He didn't think of a better idea. Um, so he went along to Pla and said he'd like to do it. Um, so they went to a solicitors and Thomas just thought it'd be a case of handing over the money, signing the deeds and they move in. Now, unfortunately in Thailand, it isn't that simple. Foreigners are not allowed to own uh, more than, I think it's 49% of property. So I don't know how it worked with this shop. I mean, I, I might get comments saying you're totally wrong. It doesn't work like that. But for the sake of this story, he couldn't just give the money and have everything in his name. So that's what I'm trying to say to you. So basically, um, he was stuck when the solicitor had the bright idea and said, well, why don't you put 51% or all of it in your girlfriend's name? 
and you can both work there you can both live there as long as you've got a visa you're fine if something happens in the future you can sell it split the money or do whatever you want to do now as far as thomas was concerned pla was a good girl he'd met her in a shopping mall uh, shopping mall he'd been with her for several months she hadn't done anything to raise a suspicion um the fifteen thousand baht a month he thought was pretty normal and it was reasonable because um, she needed to send money to her family. He didn't see anything wrong with it. He didn't, unfortunately, have enough experience in Thailand to realise um, that a regular Thai girl wouldn't do that. Um, so he, he didn't see any reason why not to. Now, he had to fund this. Uh, the only way he could fund it would be to go back and sell his house, um, which is what he did, basically. He went back to the UK, put his house on the market. Now, those ex-council houses, government houses, they sell quite quickly for several reasons. One... They're small, but they're well laid out. They normally have three bedrooms, a nice sized garden. They're very well built and they're not overly expensive. And I think Thomas sold his for somewhere in the neighborhood of 130,000 pound. He came, he sent the money to Pla's account and he went back over to Thailand and they did buy or they did take the lease on. They, they did manage to open this, um, this small guest house bar whatever you want to call it um so we're now in a situation where thomas has sold his house he's come over to thailand full time for now they've got the venue they've got the establishment they've turned the four rooms into guest well three of them are guest rooms and one of them pla and thomas are going to live in they've got to that stage they've paid a local tradesman to Develop the downstairs area into a into a bar. Um, Plaz managed to bring in one of her friends. They had a small Thai kitchen. You know what it's like. It's out the back. It doesn't necessarily have to be indoors. It's a, a gas burner on two flames. Two flames and a wok. A Thai person can cook a gourmet meal for a hundred people. It's amazing what they can do. So they had this small Thai kitchen. They had the bar. It was open. It was in a fairly decent location along in Jumtian. It wasn't in a real busy busy area, but. Thomas thought he, he could get it. He knew how to use Facebook. He knew how to do pr online promotion. He had friends in the UK that were now starting to come over and he thought he could make a go of it. So they managed to get the whole place up and running and they started getting customers in and it, and it was going quite well. They weren't going to become rich overnight, but you know, they, they were having guests. All the rooms were full. I think they were charging four or 500 baht a night. They were renting the rooms out. They were having people come in and have drinks earlier in the evening. They were doing, you know, a dozen meals at dinner time and lunch time throughout the day they were doing snacks so it, it was okay it was okay Thomas was happy he was with Pla he could see the money coming in and um, they were doing okay now Thomas hadn't totally um, he hadn't totally tied up all his affairs in the UK so he had to go back and now bearing in mind everything at the patio end is in Pla's name now Something I have to bring into the uh, mix at this point uh, was Pla was having a frequent visitor to the, um, let's call it the bar. She was having a frequent visitor to the bar. She was having a young man uh, that had visit her who was apparently a brother. Um, that's how the story went. Now, this brother would come down. He'd stay in one of the rooms. We didn't charge, they didn't charge him anything. Um, he'd eat there, he'd drink there, he'd go back to wherever he comes from. But apparently he was Pla's brother. Um, that's what Thomas thought if you ask me I won't say anything at this point but anyway he would noticed um, Pla's brother was hanging around and uh, he had to go back to the UK and tie up his affairs I mean he'd sold his house he transferred the money over they bought the uh, property and it was going quite well but he had some other things to do because it was starting to go well um, you know obviously he was gonna stay in Thailand so he had to tie everything up he went back to the UK um, now, strangely, after he'd been in the UK for about a week, he'd been Skyping Pla, as usual. She'd been talking to him, everything's going well. My brother's here helping me out at the moment. Um, don't worry, you do what you've got to do, and then I'll be here waiting for you in Patia. Now, about five or six days went by, and for some reason, um, Thomas contacted Pla by Skype, as he always does, same sort of time, and no answer. She didn't pick up very strange first time she'd not picked up actually um tried her again an hour later nothing an hour later nothing didn't really think too much of it probably thought well she's busy in the bar um she must be tied up i'll try tomorrow 
So he tried her earlier in the day. It was uh, morning in the UK when he tried, which would have been about two o'clock in the afternoon in Thailand, no answer. Again in the evening, no answer, just couldn't get hold of her. Called a mobile on um, WhatsApp, line, no answer. So he thought, well, I'll, I'll call her regular Thai number. It's gonna cost, but I need to speak to her. Rang, 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 nothing, no answer. So he's starting to get a little bit, um, let's not say suspicious, but he's starting to get a little bit um, anxious. That's the word, that's a good word. He was getting anxious, what's happened? Has she been in an accident? Has somebody done something to her? Has um, anything else happened? So basically Thomas had pretty much finished what he had to do. He booked the first available flight and uh, he headed out to Patty. And uh, when he got to his um, bar, there was something about it. It looked different. He couldn't understand what it was, but it wasn't, there was something he couldn't put his finger on. Pla wasn't there, but the Thai brother, um, along with a couple of friends. Now, they refused to let Thomas into the building. They basically told him, if you don't disappear, um, you're gonna be in a lot of bother. Um, and to cut a long story short, what happened was um, the brother wasn't a brother. It was Pla's long-term uh, boyfriend or husband. Um, she'd invited him down. He'd put the thought into her brain and said, why don't we take over? We don't need this Thomas guy. It's all in your name. And that's what they did. They basically cut Thomas out of the whole story. Now, Thomas, as you can imagine, he was absolutely devastated, gutted beyond belief. Um, he checked into a hotel on the 12th floor on uh, Patia uh, Beach Road later that day. He had nowhere else to stay. He obviously couldn't stay there. He knew he would put two and two together. He realized what had happened. He sold his house, which was every penny he had in the world. And he bought this um, establishment with Pla. He probably had 10,000 pounds left to his name. That was all. Yes, he could go back to the UK and work, uh, but savings, he'd plowed it all into this bar and now Plara basically kicked him out and she was living with her Thai boyfriend, even though she was a so-called nice girl from a shopping mall. Now, unfortunately, at this point, Thomas took a decision that I wouldn't have taken. I would have got back on a plane to the UK. I would have rented myself a small apartment. I would have worked 100 hours a, a week just to take my mind off things. And I would have started again. Unfortunately, Thomas, um, he was too devastated. He, did, he didn't take this decision. What he did decide to do was join the Patia Flying Club. And if you've never heard of the Patia Flying Club, it's nothing to do with aviation. It's basically when guys, Western guys in particular, they come to Patia, they blow their money, they have all their money stolen by a girlfriend, something like that, um, and they end up with Patia with absolutely nothing, potless, penniless. They've got nothing else they can do. They don't even have the money for the ticket. So they die, They take a dive off a balcony and they basically kill themselves. And this is what happened. He joined the Patia Flying Club. He drank half a bottle of whiskey, leapt off his balcony, and that was the end of Thomas. Um, so at this point, I don't know. I was very sad to hear what had happened to Thomas, but it's not the first time I've heard a story like this. I knew Thomas very well. He was a very nice man, very trusting, very decent guy by um, by everybody else's standards. Um, Pla, he, she pretty much... Um, wound him round her finger um she was left with this um bar with her thai boyfriend they must have been very very happy um i don't know i didn't go to the bar and find out what happened to plara and her boyfriend i wasn't interested at all i was just very sad to lose a very good friend thomas um as i say he was a great guy he didn't deserve that but unfortunately he took a very bad decision as i say i wouldn't have taken a decision like that um and this is something that happens quite often in Patia. So guys, if you go to Patia, let's end on a positive note. If you go to Patia, enjoy what it's got to offer. It's a great place. You can get what you want. Um, but do think long and hard when you meet that nice girl and you decide to make any life-changing decisions because um, you can't judge a book by the cover and things are not always as they appear to be. So that's the end of this story, guys. Leave me some feedback if you enjoyed this one. I've got several others I can tell you about. But for now, that's it. And uh, thanks very much for watching the video. This is Pete Pine and Bye.